solutions for this problem that we're having. And parents, our jobs are to keep you safe and happy and healthy, but even adults can be a little afraid sometimes as well. But one thing that is not changing is how much we love you and how dedicated we are to taking care of you. And you can ask us any questions that you have because sometimes it's hard to process all of the stuff that's going on. And parents, when you listen to your kiddos, sometimes they're not going to be able to tell you everything they're thinking or wondering about all at one time. Sometimes it's gonna come in little pieces throughout our day. So it's important that both kids and parents become really good listeners and we show patience and kindness and we use this time to be together as family and make sure that everyone is staying home, staying healthy. And you know, society will resume at some point. But right now, it's okay that maybe you feel like you're not getting enough schoolwork done or you're worried about work or all of these other problems. But this is a perfect time for you to reconnect as a family and just be there for one another. There are also so many fun projects you can do right from home that will make you maybe smile a little bit during the day. And one little smile throughout the day can make a really big difference. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true, that's true. That's nice. Um, Miss Lynn, do you have any questions from the preschoolers? Hmm, I would have to check. I'm not sure if any, oh, we're not live. <laughs> <laughs> to see if we have, but I have a um, couple questions, or I have a question um, as a, teacher and a mom when how can we um, what are some signs that we can see in our children if they are feeling anxious because of this situation because i know that sometimes that looks different to children their actions from like our actions of when we're feeling anxious of course well everyone processes things very differently so each of our friends some might get a little more quiet some might feel sad, some might stop talking and maybe they're normally really talkative. And it's even okay to cry because we don't have all of the answers right now. But the important thing is that the adults in your life, they are going to be honest with you and they're going to give you information as best as we have it. And luckily for parents and teachers and educators, social workers, for the whole world, there's such a wonderful abundance of information out there. So if you're wondering how best to talk to your kiddo, because you know your kids best and you know which style and which form of information will be the most helpful to them, I encourage everyone to visit www dot cdc.gov that's the center for disease control and you can find a lot of information about coronavirus and what's happening in the world on those websites there's also a lot of professional organizations that have come together to provide information like the national association of school psychologists the national association of school nurses there is a ton of literature out there that you can do a quick internet search on talking to children about COVID-19 and you'll see tons of resources for parents, for educators, and regular moms and dads and teachers and people coming together from all over the world because guess what? We are all in this together. We are a global family. And no matter what part of the world you live in, we're experiencing very similar things. And so it's important that we show kindness because this situation is nobody's fault. Sicknesses happen and diseases occur, viruses spread. So right now, the only thing that we really have full control over is our bodies, our health, and that we're keeping at home, we're keeping our hands clean, and that we're being gracious and loving one another. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a very important question. The Probably the most important question that I could ever, ever, ever ask. Are you ready? 
The, Ready. The question is, is the Easter Bunny still going to come? <laughs> well, what's really cool about all of the different cultures around the world is that everyone celebrates differently. But I'm pretty sure that I heard the Easter Bunny was definitely still going to make an appearance at my house. I had my kids write the Easter Bunny a letter. And this was a really great exercise for me as a parent because my kids got to write a letter to the Easter Bunny and they explained to the Easter Bunny in their own words what in the world is happening because they were really worried that the Easter Bunny wasn't going to come or that it wasn't going to look like our celebrations in years past. So when they wrote the letters to the Easter Bunny, I was able as their mommy to see some of the things that were really important to them or really worrying them. And guess what? what? These were things that they didn't even tell me as their mommy. <laughs> I was so surprised. So it was really cool to see them write their feelings down in pictures and in letters. And I have a feeling that all the mommies and daddies and teachers and social workers and community members are all still going to make your holiday and your celebrations as special as can be. And this is, a, this is history in the making. As scary as it might be, you are living a period in history that will be talked about for years to come. And that's pretty exciting stuff. You are living in a history book being played out right before our eyes. So if that's the story, you have to ask yourself, what's your story going to look like? Wow. Um, I, I know something from history. Mm -hmm. Like um, Alexander Hamilton. And he said, I'm not going to throw away my shot. <laughs> so funny. You also can watch the musical <laughs> <laughs> and see what that was. And that's another thing that just, it just reminded me. Did you know that right from your home, there are museums and beaches and gardens and plays and music and art from all over the world, all over the place. People have opened up their doors online and you can see Broadway plays and operas and go through museums all online. So parents and teachers especially, definitely check out all of these amazing resources that have popped up online because everyone is so excited to be sure that even though we're sitting at home, we're still able to have really amazing experiences in our incredible world. Wow, that's awesome. That's so much fun. Yeah, okay. I feel better now. I feel better too. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't feel better, that's okay, because everybody is going to go through this situation at their own pace and in their own way. But the most important thing I want you to remember is that you are loved and the adults in your life are working really hard to find all the answers to your questions. And parents, when you're talking about these issues, it's okay not to know everything, but just remember that kids will react and follow both your verbal and your nonverbal reactions. So the best thing you can do for kiddos is just stay calm and be honest and it's definitely okay to use this time to limit access to tons of news, tons of media, just curate. So put together the best information that you can find that's relevant to you and your situation and make space for your children. Because my kids will ask a little something and then run away for a couple of hours and then come back and want to have a really deep conversation. To me, it's like, whoa, where did this come from? But that's how their brains work. It takes a little bit of time sometimes. And I just rub my nose, so I'm going to wash my hands right after <laughs> this. But remember that everyone comes to questions at their own pace. So togetherness is the most wonderful gift that we can give our kids right now is calm, togetherness, and be accessible to their questions and their fears because I truly believe that together we are going to get through this 
And yes, there are people getting sick, but there are also twice as many people working day and night to create solutions to keep people safe and happy and healthy. And in the meantime, we get to do our part as citizens. Nice, that's good. Aw, well, I, I think we ran out of time now. Aw, oh. oh, that's so sad. I really like this, Ashley. Yeah, well, I'll just have to come too. back for another topic one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. that would be good. Uh, Miss Lynn, are we going to do the goodbye song oh, for Miss Ashley? Okay, we're going to have to teach it to her. Okay. Okay, you're going to need to know a... To the camera. Um, <laughs> L O H A. Okay. That spells aloha. All right. There's a little word, only five letters. There's a little word, known the world over. There's a little word, will live forever. A L O H A. Aloha. Aloha to you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Aloha, mahalo, aloha. aloha. <laughs> We're so thankful that Ashley Rose Quarter was able to join us today at our Imua Inclusion Preschool Circle Time. We hope that both the parents out there and the caregivers and the children all felt they learned something about what's going on today in our world and why there's so many changes happening um, in our own homes and in our lives around and how we can all stay safe and healthy and be well together. So. Um, thank you for joining us at our Imua Inclusion Circle Time, and we hope to see you again sometime soon. We'll be back on Monday with Circle Time at 10 o'clock. In the meantime, everyone, happy Aloha Friday. Stay safe, be well, and be healthy. Aloha from all of us here at Imua Family Services. Goodbye. Bye.